Okay, so welcome back. So now we're at the point of our <clears throat> head studies where we're looking at the anatomy now of the ear. And so there are uh, uh, four principal things we want to look at with the anatomy of the ear. Number one, today, uh, this particular uh, aspect the lesson is going to be on location. So we want to know about the location. We also want to know about the shape and the form of the ear. That's two. Number three, we want to know the uh, a little bit about the anatomy of the ear. There's about mm, seven or eight uh, vocabulary terms you want to familiarize yourself with and know, uh, know a little bit and know their form of the ear. And then later on you'll probably be like me, you'll forget the names and you'll have to go back and, and refer to your notes when you either have to teach it or you need to know those names a little bit further. And so, and then lastly is we want to put that into practice and, and see the anatomy in living anatomy. All right, so let's get started now on location. So one of the interesting things about the anatomy of the head and specifically the ear is how different uh, the placement of the ear is in location. So if I take my glasses and if you wear glasses, it'll be good. And I'll put it on our, our wonderful little model here. We see that it fits nice and perfectly onto the surface of our skull. Okay, perfectly fits uh, very nicely. Now, if we take the glasses off and we analyze the glasses, I'll put the skeleton over here to the side. One, one thing we notice is this. Notice that this area here of the glasses here right to here what do you notice that plane change you notice that at a very strong 90 degree uh, plane change right in through here so what we can understand is now is that the ears are located on a very different plane right than the facial structures of the eyes the nose and the mouth. As a matter of fact, they're 90 degrees off. Also, what does this remind you of? It reminds you, reminds you of a box. It reminds you of a cube. So when we talk about the head being a boxy form or a cube, now you can understand why. So the location of the auditory canal is not on the same plane as the major forms of the face which we've studied. It's at a 90 degree turn over to the auditory canal here at a 90 degree direction. As a matter of fact, the anatomy of the brow, the glabella, the brow, the temporalis area, the zygomatic arch up below and above, doesn't it start to remind you of something? How about a lens? and an ear holder for the head. For instance, if we put the glasses back on, what does that remind you of? The same anatomical structure. So the glasses work perfectly to secure on our head, just like our anatomy works on our personage, uh, uh, person uh, uh, nicely with respect to the, the ear. So we see this 90 degree change here go all the way back and of course it wraps around the helix, the back part of the helix of the ear and gets into our auditory canal. So let's draw that a little bit and let's understand what that looks like. So I want to start um, talking about now location. So let's draw a skull here. I'll just kind of draw from the skull that I've got in front of me a little bit here. We'll just do a diagram of it and feel that boxy-like structure coming down the head. So here's the, the, the uh, top part of the cranium in through here and then we'll put on the box-like form of the skull coming down below here and over to get to the mandible underneath and back to the jaw area <clears throat> in through here. And so as we come through and over, we find the, the uh, center of the eye sockets. Of course, we're in three quarters, so we're in two point perspective. We'll find that temporalis ridge here coming across and over through here and down to the zygomatic structures in through here to, and we'll do kind of a shorthand here, to get us through 
to the auditory canal right in through here behind. And what's important too as well when we locate our ear structure in through here is that we have that auditory canal behind the mandible. A lot of times students will put the mandible further over than the middle of the ear. This is the, the entrance into the brain, the eardrum, etc. So we want to put that behind, behind that, that mandible. And here, we, of course, we have the nodes here that attach to the sternocleidal and mastoid muscles. So we have that auditory canal right in through right in through here so we have that location now let's really hone this location a little bit further by taking our <clears throat> a hard edge and we'll go with a different color and let's take a look at that box stru structure even further to emphasize even better its location so if we take a box like idea back to the skull we see that vertically here right and we see this idea going back in space, two-point perspective, this direction, and of course now back in this direction. We see that box ending roughly here, okay? We have that. And we feel the box going back in space this way, and now also sliding back in two-point perspective this way. What we notice is that we have a very box-like form, but it's right here, principally, that we have that nice 90-degree change of plane, right, that gives us a, a whole new dimension for facial head features, okay? You know it intuitively. But now we have it, this 90 degree change here, but it's in perspective, right? So halfway, and because we're in perspective here, it's not quite true halfway because we're in two point, moving this way with the vanishing point applied, implied this way and applied, of course, excuse me, over. The auditory canal will be off center. What you notice in a profile view of the auditory canal here is it's located about halfway between the back part <coughs> excuse me of the cranium and the front part of the cranium about halfway between each each other and also slightly behind the mandible right and about lined up with the entrance to the nose here at the the bottom part there of the uh, the opening of the of the nostril uh, area so if we do a quick diagram of its location in profile <clears throat> let's do that now so let's take an idea of the head and we'll feel it kind of like a box first or a triangular box as well and to feel this difference right so we have the top of the cranial structure here and over coming down the condyles here of the sternocleidomastoid muscle in through here and then we come down to the end of the jaw in through and over we notice there's an angle to the mandible we've known that already and it's going to end up slightly about half but in front of and at an angle to where the auditory canal will be or the main location of the most important part of the ear which is the entrance into the brain or the eardrum. So we'll put on a little bit of a neck in through here, C7 vertebrae right in through here and in the back of the digastric area and then getting on down to the, the uh, thyroid gland in through here or the voice box and on in, in uh, so on and then we'll get over here to the opening of the eye and I'll just put in the nose and just shorthand that and so we get to the auditory canal the temporalis ridge here this uh, in through here at the top then we have the zygomatic arch and that leads on to 
See how that leads on and slightly downward to the <clears throat> auditory canal right in through here, slightly above the condyle for the sternocleidomastoid muscle right in through here. So it's location. We have the change of the box right here. But since we're in profile, we'll get a little bit of that change. But this is where it changes over. Here's the box here coming across. Here's the box here coming across. And then we'll go in a little bit since we're in profile downwards. And of course downwards in through here till it, till it ends out slightly beyond the center part of the head, which is the center line, which would be about right here. This is important to know. Right through here, right through here. Here's our box back in through here and we'll tighten that up through here. Now, now again, locate where that auditory canal is. It's about halfway. Now, it can change a little bit, but it's roughly about halfway. And it's also about halfway down to, depending on the length of the jaw and the mandible too. So it's, it's fairly centrally located in its location. That's gonna help tremendously. So, that is location in terms of uh, the the uh, ear and ear placement. The main thing is if you wear glasses or you have sunglasses is to be super cool and put them on the skull. And notice again that it's a strong change of plane, 90 degrees. And that's why every time you draw the head you want to locate where the side plane of the head is. And it's right behind the brow structure, the zygomatic arch above here the temporalis area where that muscle fits. This, see how this, there's a nice slat in between there. That temporalis muscle sits on top, helps, it helps in chewing and stabilizing the side of the head. But after the bony structure here, that's where we break off the box and make it a side plane. And that ear sits very, very differently on top of that uh, cranial structure. Okay, all right, so that's location. Now let's move on to talking about the, the shape and now the form of the ear. Remember, all parts of the face, the head and neck, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the ears are forms. They're not just shapes. So we can talk about a generalized shape of the ear, like a C shape or a question mark shape, a backward C if you will, but ultimately they're blocky like or cylindrical-like forms. All right, so let's jump on to that and let's analyze and look at the form of the ear. Let's go to that. Okay, so let's talk about shape and form now of the, the actual ear. So we know its location now located in this area uh, along the skull with the auditory canal uh, in through here about halfway, roughly halfway, uh, give or take within the uh, within the skull plane. And we know now that it's on a 90 degree change from now the the skull, the facial part to the the side of the, the skull. We'll put that aside now. And let's talk about the shape of things, the shape and form of things. So uh, first thing I'll, I'll, uh, I'll like to show my students is this, is that the letter C is a great place to start with the ear. Okay, the letter C and then coming on down with that C, the English C, the end of the lobe of the ear. So we have that shape. Or I like to tell my students if it's the opposite uh, uh, ear on the side there that we can have a question mark kind of shape here where we might wind up with the lobe here. And then of course if we kept on going we'd have a little question mark now, wouldn't we? So that's kind of the initial, I think everybody gets that, whether you draw well or you never really draw at all. I think you kind of, you kind of understand and get that. So <clears throat> I, want to go, I want to go further now with it, importantly so, and show you uh, kind of how I think about the ear a little bit further. And I want, to, I want to make it in this way. Let's say if you're a baker and you're uh, baking cookies and you have a little template, a little steel template for a shape of a cookie. 
Um, you know it's got a front, a top, and a side, and a left, and right, and a bottom, right, and a bottom, and a top. So the same thing happens with the ear. The ear ratio, and this varies so much so um, that, it, that it's, it's still worth pointing out, is about two parts to about four parts long. So our ear is, is a lot longer than it is wide, right, in terms of a, in terms of a shape. So I'm, I'm roughly guessing about two, two to four as we come into the helix part and we come on down to the low, low part and through here and on over a little bit further we get to the other parts of the, the ear and through here. So we've got about two, roughly two to four as we come through Crumb, come through the ear a little bit, okay? Now, it still doesn't get us a whole lot, but we're getting closer to what we need to get uh, a better form of the ear going. So, what I like to show my students, if I was a baker or I was a sculptor, let's draw out this little platform of where we could cut out a two to four inch little rec a rectangle. So. I'll, I'll show you what I generally do. I do something like, <clears throat> like this, and maybe I should make it more two-point, actually like that. So we're going to draw out a rectangle, a two-point rectangular box here, and we're going to go back in space here a little bit, so you can start to follow along. And then we'll put a thickness on this box here in here because we can't forget we cannot forget that the ear it has a thickness i think a lot of people that you know that when you get if you're especially ladies or even males you certainly males uh get um <clears throat> earrings so there's a thickness as you poke and prick the earring the lobe mostly but not always um into putting an earring down there i don't have any earrings so i forget to think of it that way but um, earrings are certainly ubiquitous all over, okay? So we have this block, right? And then, okay, so what? Well, the reason why I want to have it is for this, is to place the shape now of the ear onto this block like you would make a cookie out of dough or out of, a, out of a piece of clay you would cut into it. So we have our piece of clay, we have our dough, then we have our ear form, our shape, we're still drawing a shape coming down. We have this area of the ear moving down to the lobe and through here the lobe moves over. And it's actually gonna be slightly at a diagonal. I'll cut this off a little bit and this is where it will attach later on. We'll talk about that when we get to anatomy. Then we have the lobe over here through here that could attach up and through there. And it can go a little bit, a little bit further and on up. This can go a little bit further. It kind of looks like another bean shape, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got that form. We'll go, we'll throw a little more detail in through that. We'll get the helix coming in through here down to the lobe, the lobule area of the ear and it takes on all kinds of variation through here <clears throat> and we'll put on some more stuff coming in through here tragus and through here and then the anti-tragus up and through here and around and over <clears throat> the anti-helix and i'll get into that stuff a little bit later and that's all about i'd want you to know up and through there with the auditory canal, the external auditory canal about running through there, or meatus actually, of the an anatomical part. All right, so we've got that. Now let's talk about how to make this a little bit in a lot more three-dimensional. So we've still got, if you think about it, we've cut away this part of our clay form or, or our dough form, right? of our ear, so all this would get cut off. we cut all that off. Well, but what about this, this part here, right? And what about this part here of the thickness? We can't cut that off. So what happens with the ear? The ear has a thicker wall. We can't see it in this point of view until we get down here a little bit lower. It's got a thicker wall in through here, right? And of course we move in a little bit 
and through here and coming on down that the ear, the ear lobe coming in through here will have a nice thickness to it going up back up the helix etc and so on in that now we see this as a dimensional form we can even see it under here with a little bit of a little bit of shading too as well and so the point of this is being that you'll notice this is a dimensional aspect or the thickness of the ear right and so it's 3d it's not flat many of you will try to draw it flat we want to get away from that habit we want to see just like we took pans with the eyeball and the nose and the mouth to see this form as three-dimensional we want to do the same thing now with the ear so if i shade this down a little bit we can start to see it even further as this goes from here and then it comes obviously it comes on back down so we have that now that's really going to be important to understand so let's look at it also from the point of view now <clears throat> of the uh, side or the um, kind of a, a, a straight on front or even the back view what would that look like too as well as you get that well if we take this block idea right and so again all this now would be shaved off as a sculptor we would cut all this out with our knife or as a, uh, if we were making a cookie cutout our little our, our dull uh, mold would have sliced all this off and this would go back in the clay or this would go back into cookie cookie dough and you could re-establish re it and continue to use it so what's left off right or left over is the shape but really the form of the ear it's more 3d right than it is 2d if we think 2d we think of a c form we think of a a uh, question mark form but that only gives us part of the equation and we know that the proportional ratio is about two two wide to about four four parts long but that's still 2d now we think 3d here and let's think even further now 3d over and through here so let's get an extreme kind of either extreme front or back view of that so we've got the thickness of that ear and that's a part one one length part to probably about eight to ten i would think in terms of thickness so there we have that there so if we decide that okay we want to say that the ear now <clears throat> is this is the outside over here this is the inside close to the skull skull side over here i'll just put skull side over here we can say we know that this thickness of the ear rounds at the top right and also coming down the helix down and through here this would be the outer ear and through here and then to the low so it, it's pretty blunt object notice that's very rectangular too very long and rectangular the lobe down and through here the ear ring could hang off here possibly or other parts but we also see that if the lobe is a little bit longer and disattached at the lobe it could come up a little bit and then we come over and see the ear starting to attach to the muscle in skin form here along the the uh, ear uh, at the uh, top right in through here and also cart you know stronger heavier cartilage in through here and then we get of course on into the skull and we see that but what we're left with is again this idea that this ear okay is very much a dimensional object so we're feeling this like so this roundness it's probably at eye level here so straight across and then we're feeling around right around the ear dimensionally you've got to start feeling these head forms eyes nose mouth and now the ear as three-dimensional forms boxes egg forms and cylinder forms as we go around and of course that was all built off now the uh the uh, uh, uh rectangular uh, form now if we do one more let's go back and get a little space to uh continue here <clears throat> 
Oh, also something of note, probably a little bit uh, needs this needs to come in a little bit in through here. The top of the ear, this is too too wide in through here, so this could come in attached to the skin of the side of the head, right in through there. Just a diagram, but we want to be a little bit more accurate right in through, right in through there. So again, you have this 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 part here of the side of the ear, basically what we're drawing here over now and we're looking at it kind of straight on with the side of the side of the head and through and through there all right now let's go on to the other side here we want one more view i want to show you um, in this section in terms of just the shape and form of it all is if we did a top kind of a top view of it looking more downward so we could i'll draw a little box first and to show you what i'm doing and i tighten it up a little bit and we'll come down. So we're looking on top of an ear in perspective, kind of almost a, a really a three-point perspective. So everything kind of starts with that rectangular box, doesn't it? And <clears throat> after that, it, we we place the idea of the ear, the ear inside of it. So I'll be structured here. So that's what I'm thinking about is a, a, a box ear like form for an ear. So we have the outer ear out here. This is attached, attached back in the head uh, this way. And so again, what you see is this idea of the, the uh, C shape or the question mark shape uh, in terms of our drawing. It follows nicely the form of the rectangle, but it's shaved off in many respects because of course we have the the form of the ear now getting down over here to the helix coming down and being now not a true rectangular cube but of course we use it in our drawing as the idea for the 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 basis of the form now of course we're looking down on the <clears throat> the ear here and so the this part of this ear the shape or form now remember this has a boxy like top feel but it's more kind of now starting to become more of a tube the lobe down here has its thickness here and of course it comes up and then it can attach on to the ear this attaches back onto the skin up and also back through here to to the head and we could say come down and say okay well the helix comes down and over a little bit forms in the lobe comes up and folds in and of course we get to the point we really haven't talked about yet is the the protection of the ear canal the tragus in through here and then the anti tragus basically it also redirects uh, uh, sound wave back into the ear canal and of course this is the lobe but this wants to pull in this direction and then of course pull over in terms of our ear this way and of course around in through here and then we have these whorls and vortices inside the ear with this kind of y-shaped uh, anti-helix coming down through here and this kind of opens up into this conch like form in through here and then we really wouldn't see the opening of the ear canal because it would be covered by the tragus. But this gives you an idea of just following right into the form, which is a rectangular cube of the ear. Not just a shape anymore, but a rectangular cube. And now, of course, we're looking down on the ear. I'll put a little shading in through here a little bit so we can start to see that idea further. And it becomes pretty obvious that this is kind of a boxier form. Where people miss the ear, they just draw the shape of it. They think it's flat. It's not. Everything that you draw in the human form, remember this, everything that you draw, whether it's an eye or a nose or a pectoral or a chest or a toe or a leg, it's got to be three-dimensional if you're looking for a more realized kind of a representational or realistic sort of kind of form. It has to be thought of in those terms, boxes and spheres, etc., and so on. It can't be thought of as flat, unless, of course, the idea is to be flat, um, you know, for the spatial idea. But in this case, we're studying 
more academic kind of approach to the problem of, of solving here. So now we have three views to show off the, the generalized shape of the ear. We're gonna, our next one is to get into anatomy and we're gonna get a lot more detailed with all of this and get even more realistic looking with the, with the ear and start to break down some of that anatomy that you may wanna know um, to, to make your ear part of the drawing of heads in your, your, your figures even, even more relevant. But there we go then, now we have the, the form of the ear, the C shape or the, the, or the backward C or the backward C here, the question mark, about a two to four ratio. And then you're placing it inside a, like a cookie cutter or dough form or clay form, stamping it out. And then when we take the ear and place it in different directions, we tilt it over, what do we notice? We notice that it's very much a thickness like the side of a rectangle, right? And if we look down on the ear, looking onto it, we also notice that in this case, we have a top of a box here, and then it's, its front side and then its side too as well. And of course, we could tumble it over and move that box around. So if you can draw a really good box, the form, you, can, you know how to, to, to draw uh, certainly an ear or anything else that you want. Kind of relates back to the whole point of the drawing database is to start to learn to uh, master the mystery of the mechanics of, of drawing uh, that better, right? Much, much better than we had before. Okay, let's move on to the next section of the year. Let's move on to some anatomy in about seven or eight terms that you'll want to know of. The ear is more complex than what I'll show you, but I'm showing you what I think is important for artistic anatomy of what you want to know about the ear. There are not that many spots, really, uh, that you, you'll want to be really mindful of. Just a few, and um, I think it will make your, the drawing of the ear part of your heads that much better. Okay, let's go to that. Okay, so let's talk about now and draw the uh, relevant anatomy of the uh, ear. So, there's about eight terms, seven or eight terms you want to know. And the first term is uh, we're dealing with the outer ear or the pinna, called uh, the pinna, P-I-N-N-A, the pinna. And that is essentially a fancy word for the outer ear. And that's what we're concerned with is the outer structure of the ear that we visibly draw. Of course, there's the middle ear, the inner ear, and all the, all the, the two bones inside of the ear, etc. That's really not relevant for us because we don't really draw it. Uh, unless you're a medical illustrator, then that's a different topic and you'll go on to further study. But for us, <clears throat> we want to uh, just uh, work with the relevant outer ear structure. So, we'll do two large ears two, in two different uh, viewpoints and um, we'll go from there. One thing I do want to describe uh, first off, the first ear we're going to do is going to be slightly three-quarter um, attached to the left side of a, a head. For the most part, kind of, kind of like really, I envision it in this position. I'm just working out of my head, kind of in this position. For the most part, more like, kind of like that, um, is this idea that the ear, uh, when attached to the head, most people, and I did this when I was a student, and most people draw the ear straight up, like this, vertical. That's really not what's going on. Most of the time, the ear is the ear sits back a little bit. The lobe or the lobule is down below, pushed forward a little bit, and the top of the helix, so the curve outside ridge of the ear, it is a little bit set back. Now you do have some uh, uh, that are straight, you do have some set forward, but by and large, our ear sits on a slight angle, and if you notice the mandible, how it sits on a slight angle, my guess is, and that's just a guess, don't take my complete word for it, but my guess is that it has something to do with that a little bit as well. Notice again the auditory uh, canal is slightly behind the mandible and just in, uh, in front of the, the area where the, the, uh, the, the sternocleidomastoid attaches to the mastoid process here of the uh, area, this mastoid process of the skull. <clears throat> that nice big bone. So sitting in between that is the auditory canal kind of nice, nicely and it's right above the zygomatic arch and temporalis area of the of the head. So let's go on with that. So meaning then that we have a little bit of an angle pushback 
with this ear. So the lobe will sat, sit in front a little bit of the, the helix to, uh, to the part. So let's start to get that shape of the ear a little bit. And we're gonna push, make it pretty big here. It's gonna be pretty big in the paper here. A little bit more, a lot more accurate than my first uh, diagrams are. So we've got the, the ear now coming through. And you're gonna notice it's kind of that question mark shape. So the whole thing, the whole outer ear is called the pinna. So we're going to drive this, the outer ear down here. <clears throat> and we're going to put this bottom part now, the helix is here. This part in through the outer ridge, and we'll get, we'll get even thicker with it within a moment. <clears throat> this, all, all this area is the helix. The, and so we get to the bottom of that, and down in through here, we start to get to the lobule, or we just say the lobe here in the States. We probably, most everybody says that if you speak English, I would believe, but the lobule is more of a, a correct pronunciation. It's the fattier fibrous tissue down in through here that is not cartilaginous or it's not cartilage. This is much, much more firm material up in through here. And this is softer material and that's why I'm assuming that's we, we have uh, more piercings down here because it just quite frankly hurts less. I'm um, sure it still hurts because I've never had my ears pierced, but those of you that do, you can attest to, to that a little bit. That it still hurts, but probably less so than up here if you have an earring up, up in through here. So we have the lobe coming in. I'm going to have it a little bit separate from where it would attach to the, um, the uh, temporalis area, the side plane of the, of the um, it's actually zygomatic area of the, of the head a little bit in through here. So we'll have this unattached and then go back and attach here. So at times the lobe can be very minimal uh, and it can attach over and through here or it can attach up and through here. The point is you get a lot, a lot of variation with ears, like anything else, but a lot of variation, especially with the ear, ear and eye, right, mouth, and of course the eye, but but especially with the, with the ear. So I've got the angle now of my <clears throat> ear set back a little bit and I'll go ahead and make a big issue out of it. We'll put an arrow here so you can see you can see how that sits back kind of nicely. So <clears throat> this whole area, the outer part of the area of the ear is the pinna. <clears throat> P-I-N-N-A. The next area I want to start talking about and <clears throat> we'll start getting now into its thickness is the helix. And this helix starts really, well it can start anywhere, but it's the outer ridged area of the ear that is classically known as the kind of the outer ridging and gives you that ridged right kind of surface. So you're really feeling this idea of the idea right of the tube coming across. And it really is a tube because it turns up underneath and of course we could stick our finger, you could, you could touch your own ear and there's that idea that this moves up underneath here. This whole area then becomes the helix. H-E-L-I-X, the helix in through here. So we have, we have that area. So we'll start to ridge this out Nick, because there's a lot of variation of thickness. Generally thicker here at the top and it gets a little bit thinner. Um, ears, I can see them going, sometimes they get a little bit square up here. Mine does in one. One ear gets square, it pops up over, kind of has a little ball to it, and then it comes back down. And so you get lots of variation, just kind of making a generic, but more accurate, you know, kind of ear. And so this really curves over, and then gets to a ridge, a high point, and then it starts to turn in, it starts to turn in a little bit by the arrow you see me draw like that. So about right in through here, it's kind of cupped. It has a little ridging kind of like our nostril does, right running through here, and then it turns, wants to turn and go back underneath and then really curl back up and underneath quite a bit. And that's important, all ears will do that too, to a certain degree. So we'll bring that on down here. <clears throat> and these generally get thinner as they come around the top of the pinna to get to the helix. 
and they, they kind of get a little bit thinner and kind of oh mid ear or so. And there's so much variation that it's that it's kind of mind numbing. It's what makes it fun to draw too, I suppose. And they get a little bit maybe thicker in through here. <clears throat> as we come on down and through here a little bit. And then we're gonna get a little bit more of a, a thickness in through here, but we're still working with the helix part in through here. Okay, so we'll come through, through here. This tends to turn. There's a ridging in here. I'm gonna draw this extra line in through here that tells me this is an overturn, and then it wants to come in, overturn. It wants to come in. It's still fleshing through here. Turning and un, coming in, turning and coming in, turning and coming in. <clears throat> turning and coming in, turning and coming in, turning and coming in, right? So it keep, keeps on coming, turning, and then again, it wants to curl back underneath here, you know, through here, and there's a little extra space underneath that's hollow where that helix underfolds itself. It comes all the way back in. You have to get the camera or your finger underneath there to see it, but it really turns, and that's why there's quite a bit of shadow. On that, on that ear. So that's important to notice it's turning in. So we'll keep on coming down. And as we get lower now, we start to get about this area where it gets meatier and it gets fleshier. Remember the ear is about two parts to four. Two at the top and about two and two to the length. The width's about two and the length is about four. Now that varies, it can be two to five. You know, I know I have people in my family, it's two to five, five and a half, some big elephant ears and others have tiny, tiny, tiny ears as well. I don't know, that's an aesthetic thing. And then I've seen ear, you know, you've seen uh, 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 other cultures where they stretch the ear and that can be two to five, six or seven even, so there's a lot of variation. But the standard unaltered ear is probably standard model two to four and then you get lots of wonderful variation which makes it lots of fun. So you still get this ridging around the the helix here turning in, right turning, I want to make sure we see that. You see that that got contouring around underneath and through there since we're drawing a more realistic diagram. Then about in through here you start to get the lobe. The helix kind of ends here and starts to get fibro fatting more this tissue in through here. Now what's important to note, it still has an extra ridging. So this turns, this turns in through here like this, 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 and then it turns in and wants to go back. Remember we're talking about the box or the bottom of the ear, right? It's here and it turns and underneath it's still got that box like like structure, right? So keep that <coughs> excuse me, keep that in mind that as this turns over, there's kind of an extra little ridging. It's kind of a softer curve. It turns gently. The ear is very soft. There's there's also study that it's kind of an erogenous zone too as well. I'll leave it I'll leave it at that for you to figure out why that is. Um, <clears throat> and so there there's there's a sensitivity of the nerve there. So this is this whole area then right in through here as it comes up, curls up and over, and then curls right in through there is the ear lobe, and then it comes on down and then it starts to attach to the zygomatic area, the muscles of the face, and there the, the masseter, and through there and around to the flesh, and it kind of curls up underneath. So this turns, turns, turns up and through. Kind of in through there, and we have, have that going on. And then, of course, we attach to the side of the head and through there. So, this whole area, then, if we come on over, um, this particular area is still kind of the upper lobe where the firmer cart cartilage is, kind of the, the same kind of feeling of your nose where it gets firmer, it ends, it starts to get soft. Then we have, then we have the lobe down and through here. So let's let's kind of finish that part of it out in through here. Okay, so we can kind of just put some tone on this in through here for the ear. I'm using a polychromos today. It's not quite as smudgy. <clears throat> more, of a, more of a waxier kind of pencil, so this is fine. <clears throat> Either way is fine. Whatever you want to use to draw is great. So this kind of turns, 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 turns the lobe. And it really turns back in 
and wants to go. Once once we kind of hit this ridge, I'm making a little bit more in shadow. It really wants to go, turn and go into the back of behind the ear a little bit. All right, so we have that. So we have the pinna region. We have the helix region, which is that real strong outer fold, that, that curl that we get. It's like a tube. Think of it, this part of it, like a real strong cylindrical tube because it really, it really is. And it's curling around, cylindrically around the ear with a top and a bottom and a thickness. You know, if it's clay, you make a, if you made a big giant ear out of clay, you'd make a coil probably. Or you'd cut it out and coil this up a little bit and make that work for yourself. I'm not a sculptor, but that imagined. If those of you that are sculptors, my apologies. You know more better than I do. So, but it is, but it is cylindrical in nature, um, uh, for sure. So this, we'll turn this over a little bit with some shading to get that to turn a little bit further. That'll work nicely for us. All right, so now we'll go to the next part of the ear, which is the anti-helix. And the best way I can describe that is by calling it a Y shape. Um, that's what I see is a, is a Y shape. And it's kind of like two tubes that sort of sort of kind of come together and mash together and they're they're kind of molded together a little bit and they follow a little the curve of the ear and they come down over in through there. It's where they are the Y shape the most right in through here is what we're really looking for the anti-helix because it's really there on every ear. Now there's more parts that I'm, I'm using vocabulary terms for because I wanted to simplify it. And I went back in my student notes and I found um, from my days as a student from, from my professors and we really reduced it down to its essentials of what we, of what we needed as, a, as opposed to getting uh, more complex than what we needed. Anatomy is there for you to learn the form and the shape and the form of it, its location and all that. But, I don't get bogged down in terminology unless, of course, you you need to. You're a medical illustrator, then then you have to go you have to go some extreme steps further for necessity's sake. So let's get the the anti helix. Now the the helix itself will come over, and, it, and it, a lot of times it wants to move even further past its attachment, but it's a little bit firmer. It's not as defined here, so we'll keep going with that. We'll come over in through here, and this is where generally the helix. Uh, proper kind of ends for the most part over and through here a little bit and it becomes something else. So now the the anti helix is is it whirls around here. It starts to make this interesting kind of kind of Y shape. This is an overturn of a cylinder here. That's how I see it. It's pretty rigid. You can kind of feel your ear back there and kind of look for it. it has a Y kind of shape feel to it in through here like this. And then another uh, over tube, this kind of this cuts underneath in through here. So this cuts over. You can see by my contouring line this cuts underneath and you have another one over here that could be all kinds of different shapes. Really, I'm just kind of generically having it. And this is an overturn, overturn, overturn. You can go a little bit wider if we want. Like so. Overturn just for variety. Overturn in through here. These kind of come together. They mold and come, to, come together soft. It's kind of like a, a shape or form mashup a little bit. So we have that. <clears throat> and then this wants to in through here, maybe get a little bit closer to the helix and kind of follow it around over and through here. But it's really where they make the definitive Y shape, especially right in through here, this whole area. And then as it comes downward, this tube starts to turn in on itself in through here. That's the anti-helix area proper. After it starts to come down even further, it, start, it starts to be called something else, and I don't remember, and I don't care to remember. I just draw the shape of it. I just know it's tubes. And that's where I get into, so we really, we've got the pinna, we've got the lobe area, we've got the helix, we've got the anti-helix, and I call the rest of it 
except for a couple of areas I'll show you in a, more, a moment, just whirls in vortices or recesses. Whirls and recesses and vortices, meaning it turns in, it turns out. It's kind of an organic globulation of, of recesses, uh, uh, under areas, and turns, and they're more vocabulary terms, but I, I don't want to uh, confuse you more, and I don't want to confuse myself. I don't even, things I don't need to know, I don't go into knowing and learning their terms for if it's for drawing. Now, if I was taking a biology class, that's a different story. But for drawing, I don't, I don't fuss with it uh, because it, it, uh, it just gets in my way. I want to draw and get out of the way and get what I need and get out of there. So, the anti-helix here, and then the rest of it's kind of whirls and vortices. Um, and because we're drawing a generic ear, this will ridge over. And then what's interesting about this, this creates a pretty firm little boundary here. And then it dives back in and it comes undercut. That's why we can get our finger through that ridge. So this could all be a little bit darker in through here. This is a, a definitive harder edge, but this is all undercut in through here as it comes underneath. That's pretty important to know for sure. Biggest thing about the ear, it's a C shape or it's a, a um, a uh, question mark shape. It's on an angle with the lobe sticking in front and the back and it is three-dimensional like a rectangular cube. That's even more important than some of the anatomical terms. Alright, so we have the helix and the anti-helix here. So we come down two important areas that I think are interesting about the ear are the tragus and the anti-tragus down below here and they really help direct they kind of like little pointers or little pinchers, and they help direct further sound into the uh, external auditory meatus or your ear canal, your outer ear canal. Okay, everything about the ear, in my opinion, from my understanding, is designed to direct airflow, sound waves, into the ear, and it's also designed to locate where a sound is coming from. And um, that's why you, you have two ears, but you have your head in the way. Well, that's weird. What does that mean? Well, let me, I'll show you that for a moment too. So let's say we have uh, your head here. So we'll draw our head here. We've got a little oval of our head, little pretty oval head, right? And through here, and then we'll draw <clears throat> A little little diagram and then we have our neck coming down right and our shoulder so we've got that okay and then we've got <clears throat> put some features here get a little bit more more going on not, not too much more there we go all right and we'll put an ear here at the brow bottom of the nose brow roughly remember that location and the bottom of the nose okay so the big idea here about your design of your ear, which is pretty interesting too as well, is that as you have a sound, let's say we have a sound coming over here, and <clears throat> it directs to the ear. So it comes in this ear first. Now sound is coming out through here, sound waves, it's going to hit your head. Your head's a barrier, but it's going to make its way over pretty quick, but it's going to hit here first in the ear closest to where you're at. And then it's finally gonna make its way and direct, be directed into the second ear on the farther side, right, of the, uh, the sound. So that we're designed and set up to know where the direction of a sound is coming from because it hits this ear perceptually a little bit quicker than it will this one. Now the same thing happens when your um, uh, uh, sound comes from behind. So the ear, because let me draw the, the back of the ear, I'll do it in black, back, black here, is we have the back of the ear and it's attached to the head uh, here, right? So if a sound wave is coming out where my hand is and it hits the ear, it's going to hit here first and then finally get redirected by the tragus and anti-tragus, the helix, the anti-helix, and all the 
the whirls and vortices to get funneled, directed, and turned back into that auditory canal. And here's where it attaches to the, to the skull, right in through here. And so if the sound wave hits the back of the ear, we actually have little hairs uh, around the tragus and around the auditory canal too that help, uh, uh, receptively speaking, uh, find out where that sound came from first. So we're directed, and the same thing happens in the front too. So we can locate uh, with our ear to our brain very quickly where that sound is coming from. That's pretty important to know, especially if you're in if you're in danger. So or you are hunting or gathering, that kind of thing. So you know where the direction of the sound forces are coming from. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Uh, it's a wonderful little little design. So there's a little understanding that my research brought up that you might be you might be interested in knowing too as well. So that helps, I think, with the um, the understanding of certainly the ear, the ear canal, and the why the shape of the ear is is the way it is. And I think it is because we want to redirect and direct our attention uh, into that opening we'll get to in a moment. So let's continue on now as we we are now at, uh, we've got the anti-helix. Let's get the tragus and the anti-tragus in. You can think of them as little pointers, little fleshy lobes of pointers, one pointing down and one pointing up and in the auditory canal is located beneath them and they're directing the final direction of sound waves into that opening so we get to uh, the inner ear with its fluid and its bone and its drum and so it can be directed into the brain and be interpreted to the brain. So let's get that area now. So we're coming to come here on the back now the ear the, in the ear where the ear is attached to the to the flesh <clears throat> and we're going to come over now through here feel that through here and so we're going to kind of we're just going to uh, make this up to experience here it's about right in through here and we start to get off of the helix here and we come down it separates so we want to get that fleshy kind of pointer right so <clears throat> we come on down here and it's an extra flap now as it comes on down and I'll kind of draw it as a pointer first here like so and then over like so and then this wants to curl it's pretty pretty firm cartilage material it's it's pretty pretty dead gum uh, uh, hard, pretty firm, and it gets curved in through here a little bit. And it can take on many different kind of kind of shapes and forms. But see how it kind of points it points downward. It comes out. So this is kind of a nub in through here, and it comes on up and over, and up and through here. Now, <clears throat> as we come over, we still want to have it. Still has a thickness to it, so it ridges up and over. We'll draw these contour lines and it, it starts to have a ridge in through like about here. So it starts to want to curve over and start to do this. Come down and we'll start to put a little bit of tone on it here. Right, we see that, that tone coming in there. And it starts to turn it away from us and go back underneath because behind it is the ear canal, the, audit, the external auditory meatus, or the better known as the, uh, the ear canal. And there are hairs behind the tragus and through here. So this is the tragus in through here. Highlight could be right in through here. It's turning down below. And this is nice and ridged in through here, kind of coming across, and this might even overlap. It's coming down through and take too much of the lobe away in through here. This comes over and then the anti-tragus is going to be the opposite, anti or opposite, and it's going to want to point up here. And so about right here and see how it gets squeezed now. See how they're squeezing together uh, in the ear here. So 
kind of flesh out this bottom a little bit, like so. Make that a little darker. Put a little tone on there. So we have that. The, um, the now the anti-tragus will point this way. So tragus pointing from the center of the ear to the fleshy attachment pointing downward. The anti-tragus on the outside as it ends the, the anti-helix and comes down to another part, curls around and through here. <clears throat> and so it curls around here. It has a fleshy kind of bulb or head, if you will, and through here, right? Then it tends to want to go down a little bit, like so. And then kind of curl up and around and through here, like so. The point is here to remember, it's also turning in on itself. It's folding in here, folding in. I'll draw a little arrow, folding in here. And it wants to fall underneath and get to kind of a, a recess in there underneath. Now the ear canals back over in through it. If I drew it out a little bit, it's in here, but it's actually kind of inside a little bit. And of course, it's a little opening a hole. Those of you that you should know that you, if you have any kind of hygiene for your ear, you understand you have to clean it out from time to time. So that and you can you understand about how important it is to keep that not only clean but also protected in through there. And so this turns over, this comes underneath, it folds in, folds in, folds in. It's always falling inside there. And so, it, you know, it's darker, generally always kind of darker than through here with shading, right? So it wants to really get in there and, and start to be, you know, quieter with being, being in, a, in shadow almost always, kind of constantly, constantly and kind of in shadow. So that's understood and through there. So we have, let's finish out the, uh, the anti-tragus. This will kind of overturn a little bit through here. This will come up and over and then the anti-tragus will get thicker here. <clears throat> kind of a bulb or a head, but it has kind of a, a ridge to it. So it has kind of a kind of a boxy thickness and it curls over and then it comes back over and joins up roughly here. Every ear is different and then comes back on over to back up to the anti-helix and wants to curl in here. <clears throat> and so let's finish out the, the, uh, the anti-tragus in through here. So notice again how they're pointing at each other and they're squeezing they're the width here and they're forcing air into this entire area in through here so that it that the the sound waves will go into that that ear canal uh, the external auditory meatus and be interpreted as sound uh, as well so if you're a musician these are important you know kind of things too as well so this has a ridge and it starts to flatten down right in through here so we can we can put a little bit of extra tone in through there so it's a real important side area. Then it tends to, this is a nice important area, this, this curls around here to the, the anti-helix as it comes back down in through here and then it tends to catch up in through here. And this is kind of the side plane, like a like the side of a box, and it just comes on down in through there. <clears throat> and starts to hit up against the lobe, and it, when it starts to hit against the lobe, it really says, okay, I'm done here. And then it starts to flow and cascade off, and then the lobe comes over over in this way, in this direction. And so we have <clears throat> that meteor lobe that becomes nice and kind of juicy or, you know, fleshy, if you will, um, and bulbous. And of course, it ends right in through where the, this part of the antitragus ends, right in through, right in through there a little bit nicely. 
we have that through there. So now as we want to concurl over, so we have the tragus, the antitragus, the extor, external auditory canal is right in through here. And we can kind of say, this is really just shadow from the light sources over here. Let's say we made the light source uh, here in this direction. And it's coming in here, bouncing off in this direction. And through that, that way, that would give us then a shadow uh, emerging across here, which would follow kind of the form a little bit and show you that the rest of the ear now is just whorls and vortices and, and kind of recesses kind of cave, organic cave-like uh, areas or, or shells as well. The ear kind of can be related to like a conch shell. And this is all flesh now that's kind of being curled in. And if we shade that down a little bit, we can see all this moves kind of in this direction. But it's, it's a shadow, which is important because this will ridge back up and over and through. And this could get a little darker into here. You take a darker pencil, there it is, and kind of start to make that a little bit, let's say a little bit darker and put a little bit more flesh. Because this could get up underneath there, still could get pretty active right in through there and be really, really uh, a, another cave underneath part of the anti-helix in through there, which is pretty interesting. Now, again, the, the external auditory canal is just an opening, an aperture. It'll be right underneath the tragus in through here. So to keep in mind, it might show itself a little bit, kind of like a circle about this size and maybe a little bit underneath here, but it'd be, it'd be more like a disc, really. We might get a little bit of it in through here. So I'll make it a little bit darker where we kind of see it, and I'll put a little bit more shading in through there. You could put your finger Put your finger in your ear. You can put your finger in your ear a little bit <laughs> and uh, start to kind of feel where it is, but it's buried in there. It's not something that we really see a lot of, but it is part of, of something I think you, you, know, you should know. It's part of our ear, ear anatomy for sure. So now the rest of it just whirls and vortices and recesses and they start to curl around a little bit and this this might get a little bit more of a turn I think it's kind of really idiosyncratic after that it really just is um, uh, every person's got a different ear signature as well as well but apparently the, I guess the fingerprint is even more of a of a signature since we use start to use that down technology in sci-fi films I guess that's the the wave of the future, maybe maybe even ear anatomy. You know, everybody seems to be a little, a little different. <clears throat> if, you, if you know something about it, email me sometime. Let me know. Let me know what the what the deal is on. That's kind of interesting. This could turn in a little bit through here. And this is where you just draw from ears. You you learn this and you kind of make up your own ear like I'm doing, and then you just draw from different ears. That's really when you get the the highest degree of realism, and it's pretty close now. And then we could throw a little bit, let's throw a little bit more. This could turn underneath this direction and through our ear here, and maybe a little bit darker where these areas are. This is where they come together and they get nice and ridged and darkened through here. I think you get the idea. So we have the pinna, which is the outer ear. We have the lobe, which is the fleshy, fattier part. It's not cartilage, actually. Down and through here. We have the helix, or the outer curve. That's a tube, right? We have the anti-helix, which is that Y shape that you'll see roughly at the upper part curving down. Then we have the tragus and the anti-tragus, which are pointers. They point into and direct airflow into the external auditory canal, which is your inner, your, your outer ear canal. Um, and that starts the process. Everything is about directing, directing that uh, flow 
to the uh, uh, position of the eardrum, getting that airflow position. Now, so we have the light source over here. We'll put a little, a few highlights. Maybe a bright highlight could be right in through here a little bit. That might work out well. Right in through there. That might feel right. And then maybe along the ridge. Not, maybe, not quite as bright, maybe along this little ridge up into here as it curls underneath. You know, light could come up from here, hit this a little bit, you know, curving around, and then that would fall in shadow a little bit, and maybe catch over here and turn them back up. And then this plane would be about the same as this plane, a higher plane. This would come out, catch maybe a little bit right in through here. You can see that catching. Right through there. <clears throat> and then maybe come down in the low, but catch a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit flatter. But right here, the, this part of the anti tragus, it's pretty hard. If you, if you touch that cartilage, it's really some hard stuff. It's kind of like also, I think of it as also a, a kind of a protected hood. That's kind of what I thought it was in the beginning. And then I had to go back and see my notes. I'm like, well, it's all for directing air. Really, the whole ear is for directing air, isn't it? Uh, as well. Air and sound waves flow. Getting that sound to come in, so running through here. So we get a little bit of that up and through here, and maybe the lobe will get a little bit of the light on the lobe here. Light the lobe a little bit, so to speak. Running through there. Of course, an earring would be there, and then probably pop this one more time with a little highlight we can get. Get that and do that. It'll work for us, I think. And there we go. I think we have a nice workable uh, ear on this side. Let's do one more over uh, here on the paper, and we'll um, uh, go a little bit faster with it now and uh, go through this again one more time. And then we'll get to some living anatomy where we draw from observation on a model, and we'll see put all this in practice of what we're of what we're doing. How about that? Okay, so let's go to another let's go to another ear over here. Alright, let's take on another ear. We'll put it over here in this particular uh, page over here. So let's try a different view. We'll do something just maybe the opposite. Maybe we'll look down on it uh, a little bit to get a little bit different viewpoint of, of what's going on. So we'll create another view here. So again, drawing the ear, we'll start out with the shape of it. This one will be kind of a, um, more like kind of a disc like this. <clears throat> and we'll have it attached over on this side of the head so that the jaw would come down kind of like that. And so the ear would be here a little bit down and through and then the ear canal all that stuff so we'll have it kind of like that and we'll just draw it draw as big as I can over here so we can really get into the fleshy and meaty part of it and so kind of starting out with the shape which is also kind of working with the helix you remember that right maybe we'll make this one a little later on a little bit more pointy just a little bit different shape to it because there's so much variation in through there and then we want to get a little bit of that angle uh, leading with the lobe. You can think of it as like, you know, like that you lead with the lobe so the lobe will end up being angled in towards the head uh, uh, more than the, the helix uh, area. You can think of it like that. So we'll lead a little bit diagonal here and then come back over to the bottom to the lobe a little bit and get all kinds of nice variation of what you want. In through here, and then we'll figure out attach the head a little bit. Maybe attach the the lobe the lobule area running through here, maybe, and then the mandible will start coming down here and keep on going up. Back of the head would be probably here, and then go way up. And we, we get a pretty 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 nice close up of the ear a little bit. All right, so we're taking on. So you see that we have this C shape kind of leaning over a little bit because we're leaning with the lobe. So we have have that C shape in there. And so we can now, <clears throat> generally speaking, almost always it seems like you kind of start with, you just get that nice shape of it and we'll come up here. And of course you could come up here and get a real pointy shape. And you could think of Star Trek and, and Vulcanism and Spock and all that. If you're a fan of all that. 
And maybe we'll make this a little bit more squarish here as we go. And then we'll come down a little bit, maybe, and then poke in. And then maybe we'll start to poke out a little bit. Come back out, up, through here. Make it up as we go. And then we'll get into some drawing from observation after this, this part. We're in the anatomy part of it. We've talked about location, we've talked about shape and form, and now we're getting into more of the anatomy, naming it a little bit what we need, and then getting into to obviously more shape and form, and also location too. So coming down to the low, but kind of like this, maybe a little bit fuller here, and beefier here up, or attach. It's still pretty much a shape, isn't it? It's not really getting into a form yet. And through here, maybe the low is going to be into here. And I generally start with the, the, the helix, and remember this is kind of like the top of a box. So if we square it off for a second and show you that, what I'm thinking in the box-like form could be here to here right at the top, the top of a box. And then let's play around with the form a little bit. I think we have to curve it to make it look human, right? And so <clears throat> we'll come here, and this kind of curls over. And we get a little, what's nice about this view we start to get thinner here, but see how this under curls and we can get the under side of it a little bit over here. So we have the helix and of course it's turning here and let me get this part. This can get really meaty in through here, almost like a, like a, like a head to it, a bulb. And this can kind of come over like so. Then it will want to come down and start to curl in. The helix will curl in, back over and in. But there's another little part that you see on the ears. Of course, this turns right now. We've got the turn. So now it's curved instead of straight. So we had the box, and now we've got a tube. So this wants to curl in a little bit more here and here. And then we start to get into where it kind of ends. What's ending interesting here is it ends here. See how it curls into itself under here? So that's going to happen over here, too. How do we do that? Well, we want to start curling it in here, right underneath. It's going to curl in like so. And then disappear from us. This would, this would really turn this way, right? And disappear from us underneath up over and through here, like so. And we, would, we won't see underneath here because this turns, turns right, so it's turning underneath here, turning right. And so, uh, but over here, what could be fun is we would see the outer, or excuse me, the inner ridge part of it under here. So let me draw the part we'd see because this is really turning now, right? Into here, get thin. It may start coming down and start to get a little bit thicker as it comes on down the helix part. And then we get into, as we as we tone a little bit in here, then we can start thinking about, okay, I need the anti-helix, don't I? Because remember, this turns away from us and it curls back in. It wants to come back in that way, right? This is the head, so maybe some hair would be over here. But this would all be... This would all be part of the side of the head now. And where it attaches over here, we really wouldn't see because it's behind behind here. So I'll make that a stronger definitive line right in through there where it overlaps. Good contour line understanding. And through there. And we come over and through here. Now this would get, get fun. So this could be a Y shape. This could really, really curve around. And so we could have part of the anti-helix here, one area, and then this could come around. We, when we get that kind of Y shape going like this, right, up and over here, and we could pull now the X, the other two, the over two part of it, where it's coming over. Because remember, this is going to be like this way. Now it's curving over. This is undercutting under here. Part of this all could be in shadow. I'll put it maybe part of it in shadow in a moment. Darken in that line where it gets like that, over cuts a little bit. And this wants to come over here. This will come over, get a little, another little. It wants to go two ways. It wants to continue this way. Do you see that? It wants to do that, but then it also says it's really got to come down. It's like drawing elbow macaroni. 
It really is. A lot of the bodies like growing macaroni. It's funny that way. Go tell all your friends that, you know, I drew the human figure and it's like drawing macaroni. And they'll look at you like you were lost in space. But you will know what you mean. We'll understand it. We'll know you're super cool. Or nerdy. Either one. Um, so, <clears throat> the other part of the why could come over here. It could, it could be a little bit different form. I mean, it's kind of like a Y, and it's also other kind of shell shape and through here, and maybe have some shadow. This would be undercut, underturn, in through here, and this would be coming in this way. So these contour lines are important for now. Later on, you can do it with shading and just value. And so this is undercut through here, and then this is an over tube. So this is going to come over like so which is really pretty important in through here. And then we've got the helix folding in and starts to get, could be overlapped. The anti-helix can come over pretty far and jump and touch right into the helix and they get separated by this deep ridged canal. It's like um, two forms coming together and they form a deep valley that's really narrow but very deep. It's like a dark, almost a dark line where you, get, you could get caught in there, where it comes together. <clears throat> Coming on up and over. Into here and around, maybe. There we go, get more of that working for us. And through there. And then so we have <clears throat> this anti-helix, and it could be a little bunny and, and firm, and then it could come around and really open up. And so we have then whirls and vortices of whatever Design happens on that human, that human form. Remember, it's always trying to direct air and sound to the ear, eardrum, the external, external auditory meatus, which is a fancy word for eardrum. Yo, eardrum. And then we'll come out here. Maybe that gets really narrow. That would look good. Okay, the ear design here, and we're coming over maybe like this. And this curls out, this curls out, like so. And then the helix, the anti-helix, helix, right? Then anti-helix, the Y shape, could curl over. And then be curls over, then it gets a little sloped, like so. It may fall in, not quite as, as far, and be pretty thick in through here. And kind of, kind of come in and be pretty pretty deep over through here. <clears throat> Form a nice kind of kind of shadow maybe over the top of that. So we get a little bit of shadow. The light source will be maybe from up here somewhere, kind of kind of kind of coming down. We'll say that so we'll put the light source up over here. Nice and bright right through there, and that's going to come down here, all the way through the ear. How about that? And so that'll tell us a little bit later on where to put more of our shadow in through there, so we can have that. <clears throat> and then this may fall over from the ridge of the helix onto the anti-helix and the other anatomy below it a little bit. That'll help you see the form a little bit further. Like so. So we have a cast shadow, which is a little harder edge. And through there. Kind of coming down, and this might be... Let's see where the anti-helix kind of comes around. Like so, and then starts to conform to the helix a little bit. And then come on over, and then all, kind of all hell breaks loose. That's what I like to say about the ear. Just It's whirls and vortices, and you just draw what you see. Or what, in this case, what I know to help you out, but it, gosh, it could be all kinds of different things. You'll find that it gets lots of variation later on, which could be pretty fun. So we'll just figure out a shadow here. We'll put more of a shadow. This is not the ear canal. This is just kind of a under curve uh, from the anti-helix and kind of curving down and smoothing a little bit. And it's going to be a little shadow because the the uh, helix part over here it's pretty beefy and pretty tall on this side. Highlight will probably be up running through there. 
This will turn in a little bit further and come down. Get a little bit of a side right here to the helix as it turns away and in, kind of ends up down and through here. So this is kind of a little bit more open, but but a recess. It's kind of a pool, so it's going down and down, but it ends against itself about right in through there. So we have that. So now we need the, the tragus, right? and the anti-tragus too as well. So we can say this fleshy part coming out of the ear is going to start flapping over and come over like a protective hood in through. So this anti-tragus will come down and start to point. Remember, it's going to point down. The tragus will point down and the anti-tragus will come up and curl up underneath and over and point back to it so it traps. Remember, over here it's trapping, trapping air. Uh, and well, forcing air and sound waves, sound and air waves, different, but but in this case we'll think of it more similar. But sound waves trapping it so it directs it into the the ear canal. So we'll kind of wind up with the head of the tragus here, and we'll cut into it. And it generally on most ears it curls back in through here, right, and then it comes over. This can get overlapped, and then coming back over this nice curl, and then it wants to curl back over really pretty quickly and then get to up in the head meat part of it here to the anti-tragus which will create a hill and then a ridge and coming on back down and then attach up back over to where the anti-helix ended and other parts of the ear are over here kind of like this this will create a ridging turn like so basically drawing tubes and cylinders folks it's pretty it's, it's that simple. It's not as hard as you think. It really isn't. It's sometimes I probably over, over emphasize the anatomy, but it, um, in terms of just to get its importance here a little bit, but it's good to have a long, long videos to see it. And then this is the helix, and they separate from this part. It's not the anti helix anymore. That's really up here, this beginning Y shape. This is another form that I don't care to remember. It's just whirls and vortices. If you want to remember more in Go Study, it's all over um, the web. You can find out. It's not a mystery that I'm hiding. It's just uh, extra that I don't really need to go into. <clears throat> Ultimately, it's the major C shape, question mark shape, in a few of the helix, the lobe, anti helix, and the tragus, tragusies, I suppose. And right in through here. Now we've got to make these more of a form, so you can't just leave a shape. There's a top ridge here, roughly, and, and it moves down, and so this moves over. This is what's important about the ear drawing it, is that 3D part. This turns over, and then this will flatten downwards, so we'll be away from the light and be more in shadow here, softly speaking now, as this comes over here, and this comes down, and through here, and around, like so, like so, and over. There we go. And this comes ridged over, 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 over. And it's kind of a tube again, and as it undercuts here, it will get a little bit darker. Have a little, probably a little cast shadow right in through there, coming up in through and over and turning. Now, again, we won't really see the, audit, the external auditory canal, it'll be right beginning out and go into the ear this way. So I'll kind of mark it that way. But it's there. Believe me, if you're not hearing correctly, then something's wrong. So you'll know if it's there or not for sure. We have that. Okay, so tragus and tragus pinching and forcing sound waves into the ear canal. The external auditory meatus. If you have two of them, I guess meati, maybe. I don't know. Me meatuses? That sounds weird. Huh. I wonder what that correct part part is. The two meatus. Do do. This curls over. So we'll get a little bit of that. We can put a little dark there. Probably be darker. Pretty wild lobe. Lobes, there's so much variation. Oh, there's so much, and there's manipulation, and then of course ear piercings, and and um, uh, stretching, and all that good stuff. I'm pretty basic with my 
my anatomy and kind of keep it just the way I had it. No big deal. I got enough to think about without getting tattoos and piercings. I can't keep up. I barely keep up with now. Okay, but then the lobe comes in here and it wants to come over and attach and it attaches to the uh, head here to the face and through here and this can get kind of meaty over here so we have to I'll cover this ear canal because we want to get this to to the part of the tragus and through here and then as it attaches up and over to the meat of the head in through here along this side this is going to be more probably more in shadows it turns downward because it it turns this way but also contour line is important it turns this way and too and this will actually come down probably to give us more shadow into all of that into here and then all of this too will probably fall in shadow as well coming down that will give us that coming through here and this will curl around like so and then remember this is a little fleshy ridge because it's got a bottom that is it under turns here, right? Under turns, under turns here. This is gonna this is gonna get kind of ridged in through here a little bit. We have a little underturning. We want to always remember that for sure. We're drawing three three dimensionally, not flat. And so <clears throat> have that through there. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, so I'm almost there. So I'm kind of got cough drops going. Except it's been two weeks I've had the flu here in the United States. So years from now, I'll go back and look at this video. I'm like, oh, that's when I was sick. Okay. Nobody really cares out there, do you? No, we'll just draw the ear. So this is a nice recess. Way deep in here, this could be a cool place for a recess, meaning that the darker I make this gradually, that means that we can go up inside and curl around the opposite part of this curve. We can dig into that ear pretty good. That's why you have to clean your ears, teach children to clean and really get in there pretty good underneath in those areas to clean out your ear. It can get really recessed. So it's really, you know, if, if the ear was on a uh, magnificent scale, it would be this series of caves and tunnels and get really, really interesting. If you've ever been in caves before, wherever part of the world you live in, they're pretty fascinating. It's the same kind of thing, kind of as the ear a little bit. That's the way I think of it, at least anyway. So this curls around the anti-tragus, this little arch. And through here, this would get a little bit darker area. And remember the ear canals inside here. This would curl over, get a little darker, get a little darker here. Where that lobe is underneath. Always varying my contour line. And this skin, the lobe would attach directly here. This wants to go in this direction, but it's really its attachment is probably there. And then the skin comes up here from the head, the side of the head, and comes up and then starts to form the anti, uh, excuse me, the tragus area over and through and through there a little bit. And this is more just low. The helix will come down here and a lot oftentimes will start to flatten out. Gets really ridged here, flatten, flatten, flatten. And then start to just end and it gives way to the lobe. So this is more harder cartilage up and through here, of course, and then as well, you can feel it on your own ears. And as we come down through here, so this is pretty hard cartilage, especially around the tragus and anti-tragus ear, especially tragus ear, it's really firm. Like super firm. And then we get down to the lobe. Helix, it's firmer, then it gets softer and softer, then it gives way to this softer kind of fiber of fatty, fattier tissue under underneath here a little bit. So we have we have that. Okay. Let's put a few highlights on now. So a highlight I could see maybe coming, we'll race out some of this contour line, maybe at the top here of the ear. And so if it's coming down and over a little bit, it might hit this top ridge, maybe around and through here a little bit and over. Maybe nice there. Kind of soften that out, not too hot. 
and then maybe catch if this was open a little bit this might catch a little right in through here where the anti-helix actually is maybe this would bulge out this could see like an hydrotronic kind of bulged out maybe right in through there a little would be interesting maybe fake and mix in that color and maybe just a touch here not a whole lot this will be the hottest highlight probably right in through there and then maybe along uh, this ridge here, I'll take my Japanese mono eraser, kind of dig on that, dig out that a little bit. And maybe here at the end of the anti-tragus, back to this little whorl and cylinder, right in through there. It might hit the top of the anti, uh, excuse me, the tragus start. You have to be careful your terminology, right in through there. And then certainly down, maybe... Hmm, maybe right in through, yeah, maybe right in through here on the anti-tragus. We'll clean out an area here. Right in through. Maybe right in through there. Yeah, probably. Maybe right actually on the lobe. Yeah, probably right here on the lobe. Yeah, softly in the lobe. That looks pretty good. Just experiment with... Once you understand light, light source right there on the lobe feels pretty good. That's where a nice big earring could be. Or several all over. They're all over the place, right? I am not an expert in earrings. Right in through there. And I think we've got we've got an ear now. We've got another ear going to get those parts. So let's review. So we have a C shape or a question mark shape. Remember it's always at an angle with lobe generally first. This there's there's a variation there. That's not always absolute but generally it's going to be at an angle with the lobe tilting back into the face and then we have the outer ear which is the pinna right uh, we have the helix part which is the outer curve of the ear the outer curve of the ear through here that we have the lobe or the lobule the lobules are lobe in through here, right? That's the fleshier, fattier, softer part. It's not cartilage. The rest of it is. Then we have the um, anti-helix, the Y shape in through here roughly, right? We have that. So we see that. Then we have the, uh, the whorls and vortices in through here are the areas I don't necessarily want to name. Then we have the tragus and the anti-tragus that are pointing into each other to, to direct sound waves into the external auditory meatus, which is back behind this flap, which is your eardrum. And of course you have the whorls and the vortices. So there you go. That is the uh, ear and ear anatomy. So we've talked about now what? We've talked about location. We've talked about... Um, the shape and form, and we, well, we talked and drawn. We haven't just talked about it, because I've talked. Hopefully, you've drawn, and we've also discussed and drawn right the <clears throat> now the anatomy. So you know some of the relevant, most relevant, salient parts of of what you need to know about uh, the ear. So the last part is to put it into practical use with living anatomy, which is what I call it. So it's it's living now. And let's draw uh, some ears, about three or four maybe tops, from uh, some model reference and kind of put it all together and see what we come up with. Okay, so let's go on to that last bit. Bit of fun. All right, I'll see you then. Bye-bye.